How you doing today? Alright, today we're replacing the uh, park brake cables on my 01 Toyota Sequoia and I'm going to show you some do's and don'ts and maybe some tips and tricks that might help you uh, you know get the job done. Uh, I'm also replacing the rear rotors, the pads uh, and also the park brake shoes and you have to disassemble this stuff to actually replace the cables because uh, just the way that they're mounted in there. Alright, let's get started and I'll show you what's uh, what to do so for starting off I've already disassembled the passenger side I've already taken it apart and I've already replaced uh, both cables I've already finished the driver's side over there um, but I'll pull the rotor off and show you some show you some stuff and uh, here's the old cables the short one was okay the uh, the long one is where I had the problem as you can see, it's not supposed to do that. So, those are uh, going to be in the trash. And then, you come over here to the driver's side. Like I said, I've already I've already uh, finished this side. Um, this job is also not for... Oh, probably not best just for an amateur who's never messed with, like, drum-style brakes or anything like that because there's several springs and things you have to worry about and the uh the clearance issues and getting inside of here because just the axle flange is just in the way uh getting the springs and stuff back on is a severe hassle so um i'll uh crawl underneath and i'll show you some uh some of the tie off points for the cables and where it bolts on and where you run it okay for starters the whole Junction point is right underneath the uh, where is it? underneath the driver's side rear door, and the way that the passenger side cable comes off of here. See if I can't find it. Here we go. There's a pin. This right here is your main cable that runs to the pedal up, you know, up in the cab. And then it comes right here and. Uh, this joint right here is for the uh, the passenger side, and then this one is for the driver's side. And it's pretty simple to actually get this apart. You just take this nut loose. I haven't tightened it down yet because I still have to adjust them. But you just take this nut off, and then this will just unthread. See, and then it'll just come right out. Piece of cake. But. That's not the hard part. So, then, whenever you're ready to do the passenger side, like I said before, you take this pin out. There's a little clip right here. Let's see if I can't get a zoom in shot of it. Get my flashlight right. There's your clip, which will require you to push push it out this way and pull pull it out and then it'll it'll it should just pop right out and then the pin you might have to take uh some pliers or hammer and kind of tap it out but it'll come out and then you've got this clip right here which if you have to you can take some pliers and grab the cable right here and turn it you can turn it however you want to to face this, I suggest facing this part up, that clip up, so that way you can get a uh, hammer and a screwdriver and drive it straight up and get it off of there. Just watch where it goes because it'll go flying. Um, and then, give me just a moment. All right, currently I am underneath the vehicle. Uh, here's your front U, uh, the front U joint. Here's the transfer case. So you get an idea of where I'm sitting at. Here's the bottom of the fuel tank. Anyway, that passenger side cable, you have to take it off right here. There's a 12 millimeter nut. Goes right back here. Same thing right here. You don't even have to take this clip off. This will just push right up and out. So that way you don't have to bother with it. This one you do, this one you do have to take apart. You do have to take it off because that clamp 
squeezes together on the cable. And then up inside of there, let's see if I can get my light to it. There's another holding clip. See it? Yep, there's another holding clip right there for the cable, but that one's super easy. It just slips. It just slips out the side of it. Let's see if I can't move this cable around. You see what I'm talking about. See, it'll if I get my hand up in there, it'll just slide right out. No big deal. So you don't have to worry about you know trying to fish it through there and trying to guide it through an eyelid or anything like that. Just push the cable through with the new one. And then whenever you get everything attached, just reach your hand up inside of there. Trust me, it'll go. And then just slip that one in place. And then, uh, be right back. Okay. Then your new cable has, on the driver's side, an attaching point here. See, right here's the rear. And then another attaching point right there. Those are also 12 millimeter head bolts. And we'll go around to the pa the passenger side. Here's my old cables. Again, you come around to the passenger side. There's an attaching point. Oh, there it is, right there, and right there. And then there's another one up inside of there that is just a little push pin. It's no big deal. I can't get my light up in here. It's that little plastic clip up there. That's it. Just pops right out. And then while I was saying how you have to disassemble the shoes on here, uh, yeah, you have to dis uh, disassemble the shoes to get the cables out. The reason I say that is, where's it at? These two bolts right here. Right here, and then right here. They're both a 10 millimeter head bolt, and uh, they're pretty small, so whenever you uh, go to take them out and put them back in, don't get crazy with them, or uh, you might break them. And then here's what the back side looks like. Both the driver and passenger sides mount just like this. Now something I had to do, I went cheap on the stupid cables, but that's fine, they'll work. Something I had to do on the uh, driver's side was this little block back here, the mounting holes for it didn't quite line up. They were just maybe a sixteenth, maybe an eighth of an inch off. And so I had to take my grinder, I have a little uh, grinder bit, and just kind of... Uh, grind out a little section of where that bolt hole is so I could get them so I could get them together uh, this passenger side went together just perfect so um, okay okay something to add on here is whenever you go to replace the shoes these are just the park brake shoes these don't actually have anything to do with the, uh, the hydraulic brake system on it just park and brake and that's it you have to swap this arm from the old shoes onto the new shoes and it mounts onto this locating pin right here so and there's two ways to get these stupid clips off if uh if you've ever had to mess with one of these little clips in the past you know what i'm talking about they're a major pain in the butt so fortunately i have a special tool here that the way it's shaped sorry about that interruption um so anyway, the special tool that I have here, if you look at it real close, see it's offset just a little bit. And I've used this one a couple times now, and I think the end of it's getting a little bent, but it still works just fine. And so you would have to put the tool on here. It's hard to do while holding the camera or holding the phone. See if you get close and... Damn it. Give me just a second here. Where are we at? to do one-handed anyway so you get the gist of it they grab you know one end grabs a pin other one grabs the clip and it's supposed to split it open where it should eventually look like that it should split it open once it gets split open enough 
then you can just take a screwdriver you can just take a screwdriver and th there's, there'll be a little gap right here you can pry it off of there uh, something else I can highly recommend is in these new hardware kits do not use these this style it, this is just for on these sequoias I guess in tundras too but don't use this style because they're a severe pain in the ass they suck to get off and on go with the old style the ones you pull off um, and you can see why <clears throat> Let's see if I put them side by side here. So if you look close, there's a little toothpick here. This little gap right here is a lot bigger than what this gap is. And it makes it that much easier to take them off and to put them back on. And then once, if you were to get these back on here, this style, who knows you may never get them back off again they're just they suck that bad now on a normal vehicle it's probably okay to use them you can access them pretty easy but on uh, toyotas uh, unfortunately their hub is big enough the yeah the hub is big enough to where they hide behind the hub so there's only a tiny little access hole in the axle to actually reach needle nose pliers through Let's see if, you know, these aren't the pliers I normally use, but they're handy. So, so anyway, you would just push through that little hole in the axle. Put them in that little slot, push, and then turn this off the pin. And that's how you would get them off. Something else I was going to add is on these new adjusters that they come with in some of these new hardware kits. I personally don't recommend using this uh, mostly because where this section actually slips over the the shoes um, it's on the factory ones they're a lot longer and they'll just grab better and then this side right here the pin is just barely very long and it probably would not take much for that thing to just keep falling out the one the factory pin is easily twice as long as that holds together a lot easier a lot better but if you absolutely have to go for it you could even probably take the old ends and thread them into the new barrel if they if you just wanted a new barrel and that'd probably work just fine so uh you can go and all use all the new springs and everything that they send you uh those are pretty good uh, no fitment issues there um Let's go check out the rest of it. All right, and now I'm gonna actually show you how to install your new shoes with the new park brake lever. Let's put it on the cable. It's kind of a pain in the butt, but you have to be able to slide that spring back, slip it over the cable, and that's it. And then you just let it hang and do whatever you want right there and put it all together and it won't come back off until you're ready. So, uh, and then I'm going to go over to the driver's side. I'm going to show you basically the final product. Let's see. Sorry about that. Um, all right, so this is the final product right here. You can see here's the new springs, new spring. And what I was talking about, being, the hub being in the way that's it what I'm that's exactly it right there and then what you have to do is turn this axle where everything see how it lines up right there I even had to take my grinder because there's a backing plate on the back side of this axle so I'm talking about that little backing plate right there see where I had to grind it because it was sticking through, it was in the way a little bit, and I couldn't get my tools in there. So I had to take a grinder and kind of grind that out. Same thing for this side. You just got to get everything 
Let's see if I can't do this right. Just gotta get it all lined up. This will, this right here will get those out. The little spring caps and everything. That is probably the worst part of the whole job. Getting those out and then putting them back in. So, all right, that's it for now. Thanks. Uh, something else to add to this. Um, both of these pins look different. So, the one on the, the front one is just a normal straight pin. This is the one that actually holds the shoes on. It has the spring and the little spring cap and everything. You can see how that would fit in there. That's a straight one. The back one, though, that's the devil one right there. It's got this weird little curve to it, and it's there, I guess, uh, for whenever the park brake lever. Whenever your park brake lever, whenever it's all sitting up inside of here, like so, it'll give it clearance. And that thing right there is a booger to get lined up and get everything on. Even getting, even getting the spring off and getting this out, uh, it can be kind of a pain in the butt. Um, what I was also telling you about the uh, uh, the needle the needle nose pliers pushing on the caps. This is what I actually used right here. You can see they're pretty small little micro pliers. They ended up working pretty good, and then you ended up just you push them through here against that the uh, little spring cap. You give a little twist about a. 45 degree twist no I'm sorry 90 degree yeah I believe so whatever you know what I mean grab hold of that cap give it a little twist and it'll come right off that is probably the hardest part of doing this whole job is getting this getting this in there getting the spring on the cap everything so alright